the end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hey, Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. As part of our Field Day 2020 series, I'm going to show you how to configure cat control between the F3 FJP program and your radio. So, without any further ado, let's check it out. Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and we're here to take a quick look at setting up rig control on N3 FJP for field day. So let's get started on that. Now I've already shown you uh, how to get a base install of this up in another video, and uh, what you'll see here is that I'm at that point where we left off getting that base install done. So if you didn't watch my base install video, real important, go back and watch it before you continue. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to get our rig set up. So I'm gonna do something that I almost never do when I'm doing a how-to video. I'm gonna go to the online help on this and it's gonna talk to me about tabs and other things and moving around. But I want to look specifically at the information that it gives me on rig control. So let's scroll down, and I have to find rig control. Here's the rig interface. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to rig help. And it says right here at the top, to interface your rig with my software, once you have the necessary hardware connections between the radio and PC configured, uh, configure the rig as follows. And ICOM users only, it says right here, if you select ICOM, you will see text appearing asking for you to change the rig ID. So right there, it says ICOM users change the 64 in this string for your rig ID. If you don't do that, guess what? Uh, that's a bad, bad thing, okay? Uh, because if it isn't set to 64, your rig uh, control isn't going to work, and it's going to drive you crazy. So uh, I have a buddy that has a ICOM, I believe it's a 7300, and they give specific instructions. It's, uh, the rig name is an ICOM. It shows the frequency strings, the baud rate, and it basically mentions some additional things. It says here, had to turn the connection power to off uh, in the software setting and also in the rig and also had to set the CI-V port in the rig from unlinked to linked. So there's some really important information for you ICOM users out there uh, with the 7300, which I know is a very popular radio. Uh, but today we're going to be doing my Yesu. So let's take a look at my Yesu. Now, uh, my Yesu here tells me I have a 3000. So it tells me my rig name that I'm going to choose is going to be Yesu Newer. And uh, it basically, the default, looks like the default commands are good. Uh, convert to hex equals false. Baud, I, I don't know about this information uh, and how accurate it is because I change mine all around in the system. Uh, so I'm going to have to kind of tailor this to me. But that being said, um, this is some important information about the commands here. Uh, and convert to hex equals false. That might be important. So, with all that info, let's go ahead and go to settings and go to my rig interface. And that looks familiar. That looks like the original screen that I saw. So, I'm supposed to go down to Yesu Newer. I'm supposed to select my COM port, and I'm on COM port 5. I am at 38.4. I am at none 2 and 8, or none 1 and 8, not 2. 
and I require none on my uh, connector, uh, my connection power. My radio works uh, pretty fast, so I'm going to change this two-second thing down to 500 ma uh, milliseconds. That's a half a second before it uh, basically, it will only pull every half a second. So uh, things may run a half a second behind from your commands. Uh, look right here. Convert uh, command to hex is uncheckable, so I'm good with that. I want it to return lower sideband and upper sideband because that is the best way that my radio seems to work when I set this up in test. Um, I'll show the form on startup, which will allow me to stick whatever frequency in when I launch this to get started and make it easy. Um, I'm not going to be running CW, and I don't really want I really don't want this thing to change my mode. I find that when I'm using computer controls, if it goes to change my mode, a lot of times it'll mess up some other programming stuff I have in there. So I don't let it do that typically. The exception to that is I do allow it to do it on some of my software. Um, Log for Old Men, for instance, I do allow that to happen. N1MM, I allow that to happen because I'm used to the way it's set up and it's a lot more elaborate. There are a lot more things that I have to set in there to make everything work properly in N1MM. Uh, let's see. I don't need to add an offset. And all the rest of this looks good. Let's go ahead and test. All right. So I'm getting both my mode and my frequency back. That's working. And if I want to test if I can send it, I can send 14 whoop, big fat fingers. I can send 14.250, uh, and I'll watch up here when I hit send. There it is, 14.250. Very cool. All right. So with that, good deal. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to say done. There we are. Now, with that, Let's go ahead and close the program. We'll go back in. Let's make sure it all works. And I should get this screen and then that screen. Look at that. So right now it shows me at 14,250. I'm going to start down at 14. Uh, let me think about that. I'm going to start down at the bottom of where I'm licensed for. That's 14,150. And I'll hit enter. And there I am. I'm on 14150 on phone. Okay. I'm going to glance at my radio and make sure all the settings are correct. And uh, let's see. We'll get a lot, little audio here. And I can spin up the dial. And you see it's changing as I'm spinning up the dial. Got to make sure I don't get sidetracked because I love tuning radio. No noise out there today. Not bad. All right. So. That's very cool when it's showing. That is actually the frequency I'm on right now. So that actually rocks. Let's go up a little. And we'll park it on a nice even frequency here. Now, the cool part about this is, let's see, I put a call in, uh, AB6ET. And uh, let's see, uh, the class, I'm going to call him a 1 Delta. And uh, we'll put him in Santa Barbara. And let's go ahead. By the way, I can hit a control and then hit the F key and pull this up. And I can go to 14210, change in my frequency there. And I'll go ahead and put in the call. Let's see. Uh, let's do W6KME. And he is a 2 Echo. And let's say his section is. Alabama. All right. Now, when I'm all done and I decide I want to 
uh, transfer this over let me turn that down I want to transfer it over to my main logging program all I got to do is export my a diff file out here and I'll just save it right there and let's see I'm gonna convert phone to SSB uh, I am going to this all looks good let's see I'll add my station call I'll leave uh, and uh, I'll replace the operator with my setup and I can put the power in that I made all the contacts at we'll just say a hundred all right so now that's done so this is what makes this so cool guys check this out everybody was telling me oh you know it doesn't put the frequency in it doesn't put the frequency in like the other program well guess what kids if you'd set this up it does all right uh, let's go to uh, this and I can actually show this is uh, a diff master it's an editor for a diff files but if you look right over here where is it I know it's here someplace right there frequency see it stores the QSOS frequency, so when you export it out, all that info is going to be there. You'll import it into your main logging program, and you'll be all set to go. All right. Next time, I'm going to try to tackle uh, linking the digital software into the uh, N3 FJP software. Uh, I've never done it, and I kind of breezed through the instructions, and I realized that it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult uh, to do than uh, setting up the rig and I wanted to get this info out for you guys that wanted this feature all right so remember keep listening this is AG6AG and I want to say 73 and hope to see you out on the airways well the most interesting thing for me in this entire video was that I actually had to go to the instructions to answer a question. And believe it or not, with most software packages, they're pretty easy to figure out. Uh, what it looks like they've done is they've tried to condense quite a bit of information into fewer choices, thus making some manual configuration necessary. Um, is that a good thing? Well, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Any comments or questions, comments down below. Hey, and thanks so much. This is Stu, AG6AG, hoping to hear you out there. 73.